waterfalls. Such a beautiful and magnificent natural wonder. Watching the cascading waters transfixes you and like the tumbling, rolling movements of it, just like the turmoil inside of you which sometimes threatens your sanity, the rivers and falls seem to take away your problems with its movement of it, leaving you calm and reminding you that you are merely a speck of dust amid these wonders. And though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what made me do that. <clears throat> Let's continue. And though you fight to stay alive, the beauty in nature is still here to give you peace. Welcome to another episode of This Happened Here. Today we will be visiting three plus waterfalls. The Ozone Falls where they filmed Jungle Book. Rock Island, a beauty with many falls and where many deaths have occurred, and Fall Creek Falls, where a TikToker helped to capture one insane serial killer and where many other deaths have occurred. I have a feeling you're going to find this one very interesting, so if you do, please show me by clicking the like button. These stories are going to be graphics because that is what I do. These tragedies actually happen to real people and I want to pay as much respect to them. I'm so sorry for their tragedies. But I want to share these stories so that others don't make the same mistakes and become knowledgeable of the disasters that can occur if these things are ever attempted. On this channel, we travel around the US and any other country to bring you true and fantastic stories. Here, I sometimes go into the minds of my characters and try to tell their stories from their point of view. If you only want to listen to the audio version of this story, I have a podcast for that. There, you can listen to my stories as you drive, ride, or sit in your comfy chair. The link would be in the description below and on my website, somestoriesofmine.com. Now, if you like what we do here, please let me know by subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Now walk with me and let me tell you these stories. I am your host, LT Bartek. First, we visited Ozone Falls. Ozone Falls is a state natural area of 43 acres. It is located in Cumberland County in Crossville, Tennessee. It is one of the easiest ones to get to because it is just a few feet from Interstate 40. We have visited this natural beauty before and were even brave enough to hike to the bottom of it. From the top of the falls to the bottom is 110 feet. It is said that it got the name ozone because of the stimulating quality of the air, which is created by the mist that is generated after the long plunge of the water. Ozone Falls is a little strange to me because at the bottom of the fall, the river disappears underground and then emerges a few feet downstream. 
over time due to erosion, time and wind, the underneath of the falls now looks something like an amphitheater. It is surprising how much the vegetation changed from the last time we were there and it wasn't just because we have visited in a different season. As you might have spotted, it was recently damaged by fire. It was once lush with all kinds of vegetation, oak trees and Virginia pine, but over the years, the infestation of southern pine beetles destroyed the Virginia pine, and I can only imagine that humans and other types of animals did the rest. Not only is this waterfall beautiful and the hike to the bottom, which we did, is quite moderate because we hiked it, Ozone Falls has seen many tragedies and one incredible feat that I know of, like the story of Levi Rhodes, who kayaked over the 110 feet waterfall. Levi Rhodes, a resident kayaker from North Carolina, had been visiting Ozone Falls for a chance to kayak there. It took him quite a few visits to gather the knowledge and the courage to do it. But with each visit, the need to run Ozone Falls grew even more powerful inside him. But he knew what he wanted to do was not for the faint of art, and it would take a lot of planning and skill to accomplish this feat. Levi had been tempting fate for over 10 years. He loved to do these sorts of things, and over time, he gathered some experience. At the time, he had been a whitewater raft guide for seven years, and had taken a few swift water rescue courses. But even with all that skill and knowledge, he knew Ozone Falls would require a lot of planning before he ever attempted kayaking over it. So like I said, he visited the falls often and studied every part of the water he would have to navigate. He loved all the thrills these feet gave him and nothing was more exhilarating than accomplishing this goal and coming out on scratch. So on this day, the river was high due to rain and everything was right. Levi walked over to the rocks leading up to the river's edge and stood watching the water roll and tumble over the rocks and then disappear over the edge. Fear threatened to overcome him, but then another feeling rose up inside of him and it blossomed and spread throughout his entire being. I can only imagine it was like the feeling of a revving race car rearing to go around the racetrack. He took a deep breath and whispered to himself, Oh yeah, I'm running Ozone right now. The feeling, in his own words, was a really good feeling because my dream of running it was actually coming true. So he picked up his kayak and moved over to the water's edge. He resigned himself and accepted the fact that he might hurt himself when he hit the bottom because the plunge pool at the bottom of the water was very shallow and what was worse was that the river then went underground a few feet where he would land. So there was nowhere really to kayak to. But he shoved those concerns aside and carefully sat in his kayak. He steadied and secured himself and was ready. Immediately, the river began pulling and pushing him. All his training, motor skills and instincts took over and he lined up his kayak and let the mighty river take over. As he reached and went over the edge, he prepared his body for impact. In an interview later, he described it as a pretty ferocious impact. Rhodes did run Ozone Falls that day and lived to tell us about it, but it was not just due to luck. Again, he was well trained, did his research, and actually knew what he was doing. However, if you are not like Levi and do not have years of experience, you should never attempt something like this. I personally can promise you this girl will not. But good going, Levi Rhodes. Although Levi did well that day, for a Cumberland County man it wasn't. 
the name of the disease had not been made public in the article that I read and I do not feel the need to try and find it. Sometimes it is best to leave these names out for the privacy of the family because I can just imagine how painful the memory of this is for his family. But again, these stories are all true. It was a beautiful day when a family of hikers decided to hike the Ozone Falls area. However, on this fateful Friday, as they came upon the 110-foot falls, they saw the body of a young 24-year-old man sprawled out beneath the falls. The hikers were in the process of getting the authorities when they met the young man's father hiking in the area looking for his son. Upon hearing the news of his son's death, he began having chest pains. 911 was already on the way and the father was taken care of. Upon initial investigation, the police chalked it down as accidental death. But just to cover all the bases, they sent the body to Nashville for autopsy. Investigators theorized that he had been visiting the falls on maybe Thursday or early Friday morning and might have been looking over the edge and got too close and slipped and fell falling over the 110 feet waterfall to his death. May he rest in peace. After leaving Ozone Falls, we went over to Rock Island State Park. And what a wonder that was. We had such an amazing time walking around, taking in the beauty of the many waterfalls and the historic buildings in the area. The entire river run is a mile long and is between Great Falls Lake and Center Hill Lake. The powerhouse releases water in the area and as you can see here, this location is very popular for family day trips because there are a lot of hiking trails and picnic locations. But, like most of these waterfalls around here, they can be very dangerous. Despite many warnings everywhere, some people still ignore them and find ways to hurt themselves in the water or on the hiking trails. Though the waterfall is a sight to behold and the flowing water looks inviting, some spots are very dangerous because some areas have an undercurrent that will pull you and hold you under. After drowning, your body might resurface or get strapped underwater forever. One tragedy that took place at Rock Island was most disturbing for me. But before I get into that story, in that same area, just a few days before the story that I'm about to tell you, Two people drowned in two separate incidents over the 4th of July weekend. I'm not sure if this family had heard about it or not, that I cannot say. Anyway, on to this story. 41-year-old Eric and his family and friends booked a cabin at Rock Island State Park. They had decided to go there to be among friends and family and to have a good time. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon when Eric Soriano and his friends went to a swimming hole near Cotton Mill. Eric saw the beautiful river and got up to enjoy it. He climbed and jumped from several tall cliffs and each time would emerge and climb to dive again into the water. In one of his attempts, he saw a shorter rock and decided he was going to jump from that one this time. He went on and made his dive, but suddenly he felt himself being pulled under. Other visitors in the area saw him flailing his arms for help, but his friends thought he was joking. He went under once and came up still flailing his arms, then a second time. But the third time he went under, he didn't resurface. People jumped in and tried to save him, but he was nowhere to be found. His body was later found by rescue personnel at 10.37 p.m. on that same Sunday night.
Also at the location is the Falls City Great Falls Cotton Mill, the same area where Eric died. This mill was in operation between 1892 and 1902. The mill was built by Asa Faulkner and was the only textile mill in Warren County prior to 1930. It closed its doors in 1902 when a massive flood washed away and destroyed the turbine. The turbine was lost but the building remained. The mill was operated by a flute, turbine, ropes and pulleys powered by water diverted from the falls. The operation included the manufacture of cotton and wool products. Then across the street from that building is the Spring Castle. I think it got that name because of its ancient castle-like features and cone-shaped roof. The Spring Castle was built for the textile mill. The reservoir behind the wall contains water from a natural spring. The reason why this was built was to provide water to the mill and surrounding houses for everyday use and to aid as fire protection for the hot machinery in use every day at the mill because fires at these textile mills were very common in those days. Then we went over to Fall Creek Falls and boys and girls do I have some stories to tell you. Sorry I left the best for last. And what is going to be even more annoying to you is that that story will be told in part 2 of this episode and will be available next week. But I promise it will be worth the wait. All in all we had a great time traveling to these falls and the visitor center at Fall Creek Falls has some really cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed the footage of these falls and found these stories interesting. If so, do leave a like and subscribe if traveling around the world with me and finding strange, amazing and sometimes sad stories is something you like to see and hear. Also, share this video with some of your like-minded friends and drop a comment if you feel so inclined. Well, that will do it for now folks. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss the continuation of this story and please do me a favor and love yourself and others. We are all we got. Take care until next time. Love you. Bye.